What's up guys? Hope you're safe and well. Um, I was doing some thinking uh, recently and I was going to do a video on another topic, but um, I failed to uh, really think about this and was naive to the fact that uh, some of you guys are going through winter or about to very soon in your region. And I've uh, been getting a lot of questions on uh, how to care for your desert rose in the winter. Um, and so I felt that this was the appropriate timing to at least start that topic. And I plan to do um, a series. This is going to be a series of videos, probably anywhere from three to four videos uh, throughout the next uh, four to six months here and show you some tips uh, and how uh, I prepare for the winter here kind of in the Dallas suburb area. And of course, show you my dad's method uh, out uh, kind of a little bit um, further uh, uh, away from the city area uh, in his green uh, greenhouse. Okay, so uh, let me clarify by what I uh, describe as winter, especially for me here in the Dallas area. Uh, believe it or not, in Dallas, we get uh, a mixture of uh, uh, you know, ice, sleet, uh, believe it or not, snow as well. Uh, and so with that type of weather, you're looking, uh, you know, below freezing uh, at times, especially with the wind chill uh, factor. Um, and so obviously that is way too cold for the desert rose. Um, and I've seen a lot of videos out there on how to care for, wind, uh, for the desert rose in the winter as well. But majority of them are in uh, tropical or warmer climates where they get very mild winters. And so I wanted to address the fact that, you know, I get cold winters, uh, maybe not as cold as some of you guys in the north in the United States here where you're getting, uh, you know, uh, you know, below, uh, you know, negative 20 degrees and blizzards. But regardless, too cold is too cold for the desert rose. Um, and so I wanted to clarify that. And, and, and the reason for this video is to address um, you know, how to really care for the desert rose in cold, cold climates. So with that said, uh, there are uh, a couple of different ways to prepare. And really this video is going to be on a kind of a early preparation uh, uh, on how to uh, prepare for the upcoming winter, what you can do, uh, maybe some of the um, materials to use, things like that. So I'm going to show you um, uh, an option outdoors and an option indoors, depending on what you have or plan to do. Uh, so let's uh, head on outside and uh, I'll show you. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is take a look at your uh, plant um, and uh, see if you need to prepare the actual plant and the pot that it's in. Um, it's important to recognize the type of soil uh, that you have, uh, how well draining it is. Uh, and decide if you want to repot uh, this plant to have uh, uh, more well draining soil or uh, keep uh, as it is. Uh, the reason for that is because um, you have to decide if you how much water uh, you want to water it during the winter period. Uh, I understand that you should limit your watering, yes, but it also depends on if you're trying to grow the plant um, and, and have it in a warm uh, uh, climate indoors or in your greenhouse. And so that matters as well on how much water you're, you're providing it. Um, or if you are trying to keep the plant dormant, that is an option as well. Uh, what is dormancy? Uh, it is basically a period where your plants go to sleep. Um, there is less or uh, no uh, metabolic activity and so your plants is basically uh, in hibernation period uh, so to speak and so uh, if you decide to go that route um, allow your plants to drop all its leaves uh, that's a natural process once it does that you can keep uh, your plants in a dark uh, dry cool uh, room uh, throughout the winter 
and uh, you can water very sparingly, if any, uh, at all. Okay, so um, here's my greenhouse. I built this. It's about uh, 10 feet long, 10 feet wide, uh, maybe just under 10 feet high. Uh, good size for a residential greenhouse. Um, obviously, I'll have to cover it uh, when, when the winter comes here. I wanted to show you an option here. Of course, if you have a greenhouse yourself or plan to get one, um, uh, it's, uh, of course, um, more difficult or more challenging to uh, regulate temperature in here. You uh, can uh, obviously use a, a heater uh, by an, an electrical source or solar uh, panels or some use um, uh, radiant heat uh, through uh, black uh, barrels filled with water uh, where it uh, retains heat um, in, the, in the daytime and then radiates uh, at night. Um, but a lot of options there, uh, of course, as well. Um, but uh, it, it's, it's obviously tough in the cold, cold winters to keep the temperature up. But obviously here's one option. I don't plan to use this for my desert rolls. I'm gonna keep it inside the house. Um, this is probably just, uh, I'll use this to kind of extend my growing season for vegetables and things like that. Um, by the way, if you're wondering what these vines are, these are loofah gourds. Um, I actually didn't plant this. It, it just, I dropped a bunch of seeds and it started growing by itself. So I continued to water it. Um, here's a big one that's way too old already. Just want to show you there's that here. I kind of, I harvested probably at least 20 of these already. Um, but it grows so fast and takes a lot of water. Pretty cool. Nice, nice flowers as well. Okay. Uh, so obviously this is an option for those of you who want to, um, you know, have a greenhouse and, and uh, have a good way of heating it. I want to show you guys my jujube tree. It's a big old tree. It's almost 10 years old now. Um, I enjoy the fruit. Tons of fruit. I have to clean it up at the bottom because it grows like a bush if I don't clean it up. Tons of fruit. Tastes pretty good. I'm not a huge uh, fan of like uh, apples in the first place, but this is uh, commonly referred to as a Chinese apple or date. Um, but it has tons of thorns um, and is quite invasive as well. Uh, it'll sprout a bunch of little seedlings here throughout the yard. I have to dig these up or cut it down. Um, so uh, that's kind of my issue with this tree. I, don't, I, I may eventually chop it down. I know it's a kind of a waste, but uh, my wife likes it. Just wanted to quickly show you guys that. So let's head indoors here and we'll go over uh, another option here for you guys. Okay, so option number two here is, of course, indoors, uh, having a dedicated spot for your uh, plants. Now you'll want to find a south facing uh, window. That's where you're going to get the most sunlight. And I am actually upstairs in my uh, kind of media game room here uh, where I'm using this room uh, really just as storage. Uh, it gets hot here in the summer. Of course here's storage here. Um, and uh, we have uh, our kids play area downstairs. So we're just using this as storage for now. And um, in the winter, of course, as we know, um, you know, the uh, hot air rises, so that helps. And uh, this is a, a perfect spot for, for me, uh, for, for my plant. So I built this shelf. Um, as you can see, uh, a large space in the middle here. And the reason for that is because uh, I wanted to be able to put uh, taller trees or taller plants that I have uh, and fit that comfortably. Uh, on the shelf here and so I kind of left that a, a, a space. Um, I may eventually build a shelf up kind of towards the uh, top here maybe for um, more uh, smaller plants or maybe more tr uh, seedling trays 
but I'll leave it like this for now. Um, and so at the bottom, I plan to, uh, this is not absolutely necessary, but I plan to try out having a bucket of water with uh, an aquarium water heater just to kind of keep the temperature up uh, and the humidity up a bit. Uh, I may try that and I'm going to either uh, find some clear uh, buckets to put the plants in um, so that I can uh, water as needed without making a mess. Um, I do have a plastic uh, liner as well I'm going to put underneath the the, the shelf here. Um, as you can see, I have these lights, uh, these tube lightings here, uh, fluorescent light. I'm gonna um, install that underneath here, underneath the shelf, hang this down close down here, and I'm gonna have this bottom layer as um, a, a kind of a seedling air, a starter uh, area uh, for uh, all the trays. Um, and then of course the top is for kind of the, the larger plants. Okay, so you'll have to decide what you want to do and, and the, you know, the shelving obviously is up to you on, uh, on you know, uh, what you feel is uh, better for your plants. Um, and I built this out of wood because uh, I, I plan to wrap this around uh, here, the frame uh, with plastic plastic clear plastic as well uh, to kind of keep the temperature housed within this area because uh, this room is quite large and even though uh, during the day they might get some sunlight um, I don't I, I want to try to retain as much heat in the vicinity um, as much as possible at night and so uh, next video a part of this series uh, I will um, show you that process uh, on how I'm, I'm going to cover uh, this this shelving and, and use it. Uh, this table, I just had an extra table. I'm going to put a, another large plant right here as well. Um, I was going to build another shelving, a thin uh, shelving, kind of tall here, um, but I think I need this for a, a larger plant as well. So that's kind of my initial setup. I will continue to add on to this. Um, and something to think about as well, um, as the sun shines through uh, the window, um, you might be able to leverage uh, more sunlight by having some sort of um, maybe a cardboard wall here uh, or at least something freestanding and you can line it with um, some aluminum, like aluminum foil um, as a reflective material to shine back onto the plants. Um, now you kind of want to be careful with that because if you have some tender plants, you don't want to burn it. Um, but uh, that's a, an option as well to kind of uh, take advantage of, of, of as much lighting as possible here. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys this initially. Um, you know, it works for me. I've been doing uh, this for many years. I had a different setup, which was uh, uh, wasn't ideal, so I decided to build this uh, out of uh, cheap material and uh, it's going to work for me in the winter here. So that's about it guys. That's the first video of this video series on how to take care of your desert rose in the winter. Uh, I promise to go into more details in the future videos here. And uh, if you like this video, please uh, like, share, subscribe, uh, and hit the bell icon for future videos as well. So we'll uh, see you again soon. Take care.